Let's take a look at interfaces and abstract classes. All right, we found us back and tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be talking about interfaces and abstract classes. Those are sort of similar. and They basically touch upon inheritance a little bit more. So for this, what we will do is we are going to make a couple of new classes and we'll also modify the animal class over here. Because right now, what you could do is something very strange. And that is I could go in here and I could make an animal, right? I could call it, for example, George, right? And what I can do is I can make this a new animal over here. This is now George.jpg, and this, and this is going to be George, and he is, let's say, three years old. Now, that is a little strange, because what the frick is an animal? Like, we all know what an animal is, but usually, right, we have a cat, we have a dog, I don't know, we have a bird, something like that. Something that is a little bit more specific and not so abstract. Can you see the issue over here? So, animal is an abstract concept, and making a new animal in this case is really a little bit weird and doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's say you have this animal class over here and you don't actually want to be able to create a new object with specifically this class, but only with its subclasses. Then what you can do is you can make it abstract. So you make a public abstract class animal. You can see that the symbol over here changes a little bit. So instead of a full circle around the C, it now has some openings over here, basically denoting that it is incomplete, quote unquote, and it is now abstract. And what this abstract class allows you to do is also make abstract methods, which are really freaking cool. So there's going to be a public and then abstract, and then this is going to be a void, and we're going to call this move. Now, what you will find is that, wait a moment, this is this looks kind of weird. Yeah. So basically, we're sort of declaring a method over here without a method body. So we're basically saying there's no specific implementation right here. The implementation of the move method has to be done by the subclass. So if I go into the cat class, all of a sudden we get an error right here. And if I hover over this, you can see I have to implement the move method from the animal because it is abstract, right? We don't have any implementation in the animal itself. However, every class that inherits from animal, so cat and dog in this case, have to implement the move class. So here then, let's say the move class for the cat is going to be cat is sneaking. Because for some reason, cats are sneaky, I guess, whatever. <laughs> And then when I go to the dog, the same thing applies, right? I have to implement the move method over here. And let's say here, then system out print line. And this is going to be dog is running, right? So this would be one example of an abstract class. Pretty freaking cool. And you can now also see the animal is abstract, cannot be instantiated. So I can't make a new animal. This has to be either a cat or a dog. And I can also then say George.move, for example, there you go. And I can also say the same thing with Jeremy.move. And you will see that for George, right? The cat is sneaking while Jeremy, the dog is running. Awesome. Once again, even though the move method here was called on an animal, it still uses the same idea that polymorphism does where it uses the most relevant one, basically the one of the actual object or instance that was created here. Now, interfaces are very similar to abstract classes. However, they offer just a little bit of a different way of actually adding something because we have seen before that basically extending from a class you can only ever extend from one class. However, an interface, you can implement multiple interfaces and interfaces are sort of in a very high level overview. They're sort of a promise that a specific thing is going to be possible with this type of class. So let's, for example, say I can make a new cl Java class. I'm going to choose the interface right here and I'm going to call this the I flyable, right? So this is now the I flyable in this case. Now, this is not a convention you have to follow. I personally like this convention, but I know a lot of people do not like this convention to start an interface with an uppercase I, and then the actual name should always be something and then able. This is a personal preference of mine. Another one of those Java conventions that you might follow or might not follow. I personally like this, but a lot of people I know don't like this. But the idea of the iFlyable over here would then be as well. We could determine a method that could be implemented, right, by this iFlyable that's called iVoidFly, let's say, right? And then we know every time a certain class implements the fly flyable interface that it is definitely able to fly. So for example, what we could do is we could make two new classes. One of them is going to be the bird, right? So this is going to be the bird class. And we're also going to make the aeroplane class. There you go. So now we have an aeroplane and we have a bird. Now let's first of all finish the bird. Well, the bird, of course, also extends the animal class right here. So we're going to hover over this and implement the move method. We'll hover over this again, create constructor matching super. For the move, we'll not implement anything just yet. We'll first of all also override the make sound method over here, which is going to be system out print line. And this, this is going to be singing. There you go. So the bird is going to sing here. And then for the move, we're going to do that in a second. But first of all, we're going to also 
add the interface, right? Because of course a bird would be flyable. So how do we add an interface? Well, this is going to use the implements keyword right here and then choose the I flyable interface over here. There you go. And the same thing goes, hover over this and implement the fly method in this case. And let's say system out print line bird is flying. And now the crazy thing about it is that what I can do is I can call the fly method in the move method right here. That makes a lot of sense. And if your gears start turning and you sort of understand the relationships of objects and how they relate to each other, you might be like, well, wait a second. If I do, if I have like a move method and a fly method, couldn't you possibly also make another abstract class that's called something like flyable animal that already implements the iFlyable interface and always does this, right? Where it always implements the fly method and then you could override it that is pretty much exactly right you could do something like that as well it's not always strictly necessary because the inheritance and how you structure things it is not as rigid as you might think right it's very fluid it depends on basically what you want to do if you know that you're going to have like a hundred different flyable animals then it would make sense to abstract that out a little bit more but if you're going to have a bird and an aeroplane and then maybe i don't know a flamingo it's not a, it's a flightless bird so you wouldn't even have that there's way more fluidity in doing this but let's say the aeroplane, right, in this case, is also flyable because, well, that is the case, right? So we can implement the iFlyable interface for this as well. And we can implement the fly method over here. And I can then just say system out print line. And I can say plane is jetting ahead. And that's all I have for the aeroplane over here. And what's so cool about this is I can do all sorts of crazy things. Let's actually get rid of just about almost everything that I'm going to be outputting here. And we can make, first of all, a new animal over here. That is going to be jewels, let's say, equal to a new bird. In this case, this is going to be jewels.png, jewels over here. And let's say jewels is one years old. And here, and then I can say jewels.move. Now, if I do this, what's going to happen is that bird is flying. That's pretty freaking cool. However, if I wanted to call the fly method, you can see that does not work. Now, why does that not work? Well, right now, jewels is an animal and the animal class itself has no idea about this interface, right? If you take a look at the inheritance structure, right? The topmost class is the animal and its direct subclass is the bird. And the bird also implements the interface. So the bird is the first class, so to speak, that knows the interface inside of the animal structure. So what you would have to do is you would have to cast this into a bird or an eye flyable. But we can do this by calling dot cast. You can see like this. If I then hit the tab key to autocomplete, it generates all of the parentheses automatically, and I'm going to cast this to a bird. And now all of a sudden I can call the fly method individually. And there you go. Now it basically suggests to me, instead of casting it, I should just change the type over here. That's also fine. But I wanted to show you the casting of this as well. So you can do it like this. And then all of a sudden, Jules is also flying. So it's also going to be bird is flying. And now we're good. I'm just going to sort of layer a bunch of things on top of each other. Let's say I'm going to make a list of animal over here, right? So this is going to be our animals, right? And this is going to be a new area list. There you go. That's fine. And I'm just going to add a bunch of my animals, right? So I'm going to add Benji over here. I'm going to add Whiskers. I'm also going to add Jewels, let's say, right? There you go. That's fine. And I'm going to make another list over here. And this is going to be of I flyable, right? So this is going to be my flyables. Right, a new area list as well. Why not? And I'm going to do a flyables.add, and we're going to add over here jewels again, which you can see does not work because we provided an animal. And once again, the animal class simply does not like it doesn't know that whatever is written inside of the animal class definitely is an eye flyable. Therefore, it does make sense to follow the prescription here, let's say, and make it a proper bird. And all of a sudden, it's totally fine. We also don't need to cast it anymore, right? Because now it is a bird. The fly method is available to us. However, because a bird is both an animal and it implements the eye flyable interface, we can add it no issues whatsoever. And we can say flyables.add and I can make, let's say, a new aeroplane over here. And that works totally fine. And what I would then be able to do is, let's say, make some for each loops. So for each animal, animal in the animals list, right? I'm just going to say animal.move, let's say. And I'm also going to say animal.make sound over here. And then afterwards, make another for each loop. And then for each I flyable, right? Flyable in the flyables list over here, I can call flyable.fly. And you can see regardless of whether or not it's an aeroplane or a bird or whatever other flying thing you could think of, we can basically output this. And if I do this, you can see the first thing is the bird is flying. 
and the bird is flying, right? Those are these two. And then the dog is running because Benji was the first element in this list, right? Then it's going to woof over here. Then Whiskers is going to move and then make a sound right here, right? And then the bird is flying and the singing. And then in the flyables, the bird is flying and then the plane is jetting away. So what have we learned? Well, the first thing is that if this is still a little bit confusing to you on how you can actually use this and implement this and, you know, use interfaces and abstract classes, that is absolutely normal because really seeing the entire structure on how to use it is just going to take a lot of time, right? The most important thing is just that you roughly know an interface is a type of class, let's say, quote unquote, or a type of structure that allows to be implemented by other classes that sort of give them a contract, let's say, and they ensure that a certain method is implemented, right? One of the things that an interface might allow you to do, for example, is to, you know, load and save data. But maybe you don't really care how the data is saved or loaded. You just want to call the save method and the load method, and you want your string basically to be returned, whether or not it's like written on a disk or comes from a, like from an HTTP service or something like that. That doesn't interest. The only thing that interests you is that you get the string back. That would be one of those things. This is probably the one tutorial I would be okay with if you're like, okay, okay, I really am not 100% sure how to implement those. You will see some of those examples when you actually move on to Minecraft code as well, right? If you, when you jump into actually modding, then you will see something like this as well, right? You will see a couple of interfaces, a lot of abstract classes that exist, right? Once again, in the entity structure, there's a lot of abstract classes that are using a big inheritance tree. So there are definitely examples of this later down the line in the actual Minecraft code. For the time being, this is hopefully a roughly an introduction for you to at least, to at least be sort of in the vicinity of, okay, this is like an interface. This is an abstract class. I've heard these terms. I roughly know what they are. I roughly know a couple of things about them. That That is hopefully what I achieved here today. But I'm hoping to achieve a little bit more in this video right here where we'll talk about anonymous classes. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.